Good evening. We're going to start in Proverbs 12 today. And um, we'll read verses 1 through 14 today. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. A person who loves instruction grows into a very intelligent being. I believe part of this the instruction mean, meant here is instruction in right living. We are eager to learn God's ways, and we quickly see sins in our life and repent. The greatest knowledge that we can have is to know God in his word. Um, let me invite a few friends over here before I get too far along. Uh, it takes me a little time, but I usually get it took care of. And I hope everybody's having a very good nice spring day it's been a little chilly today for us but uh it's been a pretty nice day so far okay so we're in proverbs 12 verse 2 oh brutish or stupid means acting like a beast that does not accumulate knowledge if we are not eager to learn of god we are like a beast without a conscience or to put it another way he's as stupid as a brute cattle proverbs 12 verse 2 a good man obtained the favor of the lord but a man of wicked devices will he condemn a good man is seeking to please god instead of himself the Lord is pleased with this. A wicked man is always trying to figure out ways to do evil. God will not approve of evil in any fashion. God condemns evil every time. Verse 3. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. When you see a righteous man, it is looking like looking at a giant oak tree with deep, deep roots. We will not be easily moved even through, though the winds of false doctrines are strong. The familiar image of, is of the righteous being firm like a flourishing tree. Even in the parable of the sowing of the seed in the eighth chapter of Luke, Jesus tells us the seed that fell on good ground had good roots and brought forth much fruit. You can read in Luke 8, verses 15 through 18, you know, the wicked man doesn't even bother to see the seed at all. Verse 4, Proverbs 12. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh it shame is as rottenness to his, in his bones. But what we see here, how important it is for a woman to be upright, not only for her own good and welfare, but so her family will not be ashamed of her. Her husband can be very proud of her because she will not be not make him ashamed of her. It would crown him for her to be totally faithful to him. This is speaking of a suffering that is like a painful and incurable condition. When we get in chapter 31, we will read extensively about the kind of woman she will be. And the spirit teaching of this verse. Jesus is coming back for a chaste virgin, the true believers, to be his bride. Nothing is worse than an unfaithful wife. She brings torment and shame to her husband, her family, and herself. Verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. A righteous person thinks of things that are correct. His ways are the ways of God. His thoughts are truthful and fair. The wicked are deceivers trying to convince others 
that lies or truth, not only are they deceiving others, but the people who counsel them are deceivers. As well, they believe a lie and try to convince others to believe lies. Verse 6, the words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Wicked people lie in wait to destroy someone else for selfish gain. False accusations many times cause a person to kill someone who is totally innocent. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Jane Tech. This is similar to chapter 1, verse 11 through 12, where part of verse 11 states, Let us lie and wait for blood. The wicked divides plots and deception in which the innocent are captured and victimized like one who is taken by death himself. The upright speaks words of life, not death. Proverbs 12, verse 7. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Tribulation comes to all, but the wicked cannot stand up to trials because they have no source of strength, Jesus, to rely upon. We have Jesus. A righteous person will stand firm in adversity knowing that God will see him through. The rewards of wise living are not only to individuals, but extend to one's household or family. Verse 8. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is a perverse, perverse heart shall be despised. If you know not to sin and go ahead and sin anyway, you are guiltier than someone who sins not knowing that it is sin. There has been much said in our society today about perversion. Perversion of any kind is terrible, but when it becomes a way of life with you, it is perversion of the heart. He that truly has a perverted heart will be despised. Perversion has to do with unnatural sex or an extreme extent of sex. Verse 9 of Proverbs 12. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honored himself and lacketh his bread. This scripture above when it is saying despised is really saying lot is esteemed. An obscure person of lowly rank who can at least afford to hire a servant because of his honest game. The second person is someone who has nothing to be proud of and yet is bragging by himself all the time. He is so downtrodden that he can't even feed himself, and yet he is a bragger. He constantly tells everyone how wonderful he is. At least the first man was not dependent on someone else to provide for his food. He is considered better than the one who falsely boasts about his calmness, but is really poor. Verse 10 of Proverbs 12. A righteous man regards the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. A righteous man has concern for the condition of his heart, of his beast, excuse me. But show me a man who is cruel to animals, and I will show you a wicked man to others. God showed mercy to animals when he told the man to rest his animals on the Sabbath, as well as resting himself. Man over the animals, and God made the animals to serve man. But an animal you feed well and care for will work better for you. People who love God love people as well and are kind to animals that are dependent on them. A wicked person does not love God or man and is cruel to animals that cannot help, help themselves. Verse 11. He that tillers his land shall be satisfied with bread. But he that follows the same person is void of understanding. Someone who works his field with his hands shall not go hungry. But someone who does not want to work and always looking for shortcuts to take, it's he that expends energy and worthless pursuits and fantasies, which is the uses as outright. I'm going to say it, laziness. Verse 12, the wicked desires the net of evil man, but the root of the righteous yielded fruit. 
The wicked desires of the booty is referring to the desires for spoils gained by the schemes of the wicked. Contrasted with a simple life of obedience that produces blessings. We see in this scripture the righteous produce fruit pleasing unto God. A workman who needeth not to be ashamed is a righteous person. Verse 13. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the judge shall come out of trouble. Transgression of the lips would be lies. When you tell a lie, it needs to call for another lie to cover up the first first. And pretty soon, the liar is trapped because they cannot remember all the lies and keep them straight. The just person tells the truth. There is no problem for this person to remember. They just tell the facts, and the truth wins out every time. The just have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous. Verse 14, a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompose of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. We see here that speaking can produce fruit. A minister who tells others about Jesus can produce much fruit from God with words that come from the minister's mouth. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The fruit of his mouth deals with the power of words. The reward, the reward of wise words is like the reward of physical labor. You see, preaching produces fruit for the kingdom. In the last part of this, we can see we see recomposed rewards comes from men working with their own hands. Um, I'm going to stop right there and rest a little while, and I'll try to come back later to finish up the chapter. If not, I'll do it uh, tomorrow. But uh, until then, thank you for joining me, and God bless you on this lovely spring day on Thursday, March the 21st, 2019. Coming live to you from Valdosta, Georgia. They call me Lady Deborah, Deborah Butterfly, whichever. I'm on YouTube. I do uh, put my videos on YouTube. I'm reading Proverbs, Psalms, and I'm doing a study on Hebrews in my Wall by Faith group and also on YouTube. So if you don't catch me here on Facebook, you can catch me on YouTube. And my channel is Deborah Carver on YouTube, but I will try to get back and finish up this chapter later on. God bless you. Good night.